Thanks. Uh, so we'll be going for three questions and uh, we'll have questions from easy, medium, hard. And uh, first of all, the first question is from easy bucket. I'll share my screen. Uh, everybody can see the screen. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what this question is that uh, you will be given two coordinates from each rectangle. Like uh, this is the coordinate of bottom left and uh, like x1, y1 and x2, y2 is the upper right corner. And you, there are two rectangles and you need to uh, give the answer that if they are, over, if they overlap or not. Like if they overlap, you need to return true. So this is a question. Overlap means like if one of the rectangle uh, is inside the another rectangle or covering half of the rectangle, which is called an overlap. And one more thing, if the, it is also mentioned that uh, that two rectangles that only touch at the corner or edges do not have overlap. Like if they have, uh, if they are on a, like if they if the coordinates are equal as well, like other coordinates uh, to another rectangle or coordinates, then also they are not overlapping. Like if X one of um, one rectangle is one, another also X one is one, then it's not overlap. X to of yeah. So yeah, anybody has tried this question, wants to discuss their approach, please welcome. Anyone? Anyone wants to have tried this? Any proof? Yeah. For yeah, I tried it. So it was pretty simple. Like we just have to get uh, check if that if one rectangle is uh, overlapping other by just checking that uh, one rectangle is like on the right of that rectangle, on the left, or the above or below. If this four condition happens then they does not overlap else it will overlap yeah i have also worked on this approach even i have written the code on this one only so which okay. is basically checking the condition of if they are not overlapping um, which is true otherwise it will be false and uh, like they are they'll be otherwise it would be true so anyone else and share any different approach? My uh, approach is to reduce it to uh, a single, uh, like uh, a one a single dimension. To say, you know, suppose we have two lines and to see that two lines overlap or not. Because the rectangle is like two dimension, right? So we just check you know, both the horizontal uh, dimension is that overlap or the vertical dimension is overlap. Um, so, so kind of reduce it to a single line. So you are uh, making a single line of all the coordinates or just uh, like uh, uh, the, at the first coordinates of both the rectangles and the second coordinates of both the rectangles in the different lines? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, but, uh, like, let me see. Yeah, because the uh, <clears throat> the coordinate of the uh, yeah the x, I mean the coordinate of x first, and then the coordinate of y. Mm -hmm. So, can you explain with this first example? How did you? Uh, make it a single line 
so the the the, the rectangle is too uh i think a, a rectangle with a far line right two line are parallel mm -hmm. okay so i'm thinking of uh to see if that two line are uh, overlap i i haven't you know worked it out yet but that's you know just on my mind okay so uh, you are saying if we can make them into a single line um, so if one of the coordinates is uh, is in that particular in between that particular first rectangle or uh, like near about then it's a uh, um, it's overlap yeah, if, if the horizontal line are not overlap, then then it's not overlap, right? But if the horizontal line are overlap, then we have to check if the vertical line are overlap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that also sounds interesting. I haven't heard about that. Like, think about this kind of thing. Uh, we can try somehow. Anybody else who wants to share any thoughts on this uh, particular? One approach that I tried was like find the center of both the rectangles and the distance between both those rectangles. Like the distance should be like less than the sum of half of length of one side. If they are to overlap on the x axis. So the distance between the center of two rectangles will be like half of length of one rectangle plus half of length of the second rectangle. Like if the distance is greater than this, then they are not overlapping on the x-axis. Similarly, the distance between the centers is less than like the half of the breadth of first rectangle and half of the breadth of second rectangle, then they're overlapping. Interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Can you explain on the whiteboard? Yeah, or... Just a second. Hello? Yeah. Do you want to explain on the whiteboard your approach? That sounds very interesting. Uh, can you just draw? I'll, I don't have a, actually a laptop with me right now, but if you'll draw with me, I'll show you. Like I'll kind of walk you through with it so that others can also visualize it. Sure. If that's okay. Uh, let me show you. Okay. Can you see the whiteboard? Yeah. yeah. So we have a rectangle. Sorry, yeah. I'm bad at this. So, like, we have a rectangle of one rectangle. Yeah, it is. And its coordinates are like zero and zero and this is um, two and two yeah yeah so, so you are finding the midpoint of this di uh, this yeah. particular point okay yeah. so we have a midpoint like maybe one one yeah one one will be the midpoint of this rectangle yeah and Similarly, the length is two and the height is also two, right? So it's kind of a square only. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of a yeah. square. Yeah, similarly, if any other rectangle is to overlap, so mm -hmm. if the distance from one one, right? So let's say the it's distance from one one any, two? the center of this rectangle okay to uh, this rectangle yeah center of this rectangle 
okay let it be something um, and others are like um, two two this is center is two two because we have a coordinates of one and one and three and three somewhere like that yeah it's not an actual representation right yeah. because if yeah. it's if this is it's on two two then the center would coincide with the top right corner of this rectangle anyways i'll explain this okay for this let's take a case when it's just overlapping on the x axis okay mm -hmm. so if if the rectangle first is on 0 0 right and mm -hmm. its length is 2 and to just overlap so the second rectangle must be if it's just touching the side on the x axis it should be on starting from 2 2 and the length would be anything right so to just overlap the length will be 1 plus the half of the length of the second rectangle. If the distance reduces from that, right, so it will come inside the rectangle from the, like, because distance is a squared product, right, so it can overlap from any distance. Like, if you just take one example from the problem, I'll explain it with that, okay? So, yeah. it's clear. Yeah, it's... Uh... You can explain like it's a, we have a coordinates of zero zero two two and one one and three three. Yeah. So, so on zero zero, right mm -hmm. and two two, its center is one one, and from one one and three three, its center will be two comma two, yeah. right? So, so the unit distance of from one comma one, that is the center of the first rectangle, to two comma two, is like. 1 square plus 1 square 2 under root 2. Yeah. Yeah, under root 2 should be less than 1 plus 1, which is the half of the length of both. Mm -hmm. Right? So yeah. under root 2, under root 2 is less than half of the length of one rectangle plus half of the length of other rectangle. So we know mm -hmm. that they are overlapping on the x axis. Now, to confirm that they're also overlapping on the y-axis, we'll do the mm -hmm. similar thing. The distance between the two centers should be half of the like breadth of the recta first rectangle and second rectangle. Like if you draw it to a scale, then you'll be able to visualize it like when you push the rectangle. Yeah, got it. Yes, yes, correct. Uh, yeah, that's a great approach. Anybody have a, uh, anybody wants to Anybody have doubt of, about this particular approach? Um, so it seems like this is a good approach. And what's the complexity for this particular thing? Uh, so this is like a, like a constant, like you're just doing just calculations only. So yeah. the main complexity is like how the square root is implemented in the language because mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. the distance mm -hmm. between two points you can easily find by the distance formula. So that's x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1 like squared and under root. So the main complexity comes like that is I guess I'll, I don't know though it's a constant only in most languages but if we're really going into details so I think it would be a log yeah, the complex. complexity, I think in this particular problem, we actually, we know the coordinates. We just need to do some calculation yeah. to find out the, I yeah, think so, uh, uh, there is no memory issue and no, um, I think we are not taking any, in all the approaches, I think the other approach also. Um, yeah, yeah. Every, not taking, everything would be constant uh, only. Yeah. yeah. One one thing, uh, it know, would be log and time time. because uh, we are calculating the square root and square root cause log and time complexity. Uh, what I think. Yeah. Sorry? yeah, one thing I can see it could be it it could be uh, have this could be error in this problem is because it could produce the floating point right, and with the floating point when it go into like uh, you know precision, so the distance is very very close. We uh, we might not be uh, we we might think it overlap but it not overlap. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you try Ronic for any uh, other like 
if their coordinates are matching or some other test case actually it passed on lead code so that's why i thought about this because this is kind of like how we detect collisions between rectangles in games like so that's how i got the idea but yeah i i i, I agree with the floating point error but because those are like if like it's on the only very is like very uncommon in cases of irrational numbers only when the floating point is actually rounded off so in that case only it was i think the input size was also not that constrained i guess so this approach worked i guess that's why mm-hmm. okay you can also just compare the square of your don't convert in, into a square root just convert yeah, the yeah. other side yeah we can uh, we can avoid that problem as well like we can just square the distance and then we can get rid of getting the square so yeah yeah just be careful of out of bound like you know maybe your integer now is not able to hold that i don't know the test case but if you handle that then this will work yeah that would work so you can also also you can modify this approach to just find the distance like it's it can be like if you find the center point of both the rectangles you can find the distance because we are checking only on the x axis for the current you don't actually need the distance vector you can just find the distance on the x axis and that distance should be less that this property holds that then also like if the distance between the two centers on the x axis is less than half like because when you're trying to move the second rectangle away from the first one so the distance is only increasing on the x axis right if you are separating it on the x axis so you can just find like x center of x2 minus x1 that will also work on the x axis distance you don't need the actual distance vector also to calculate overlaps on individual axes which the approach i guess somebody was discussing before me like to convert it into a single dimension so mm-hmm. if i if i just consider the length side of two rectangles so when would these two line segments overlap is when the center from one line segment and which the approach the guy before me just described is that the center of one line and the center of other line the distance between those two lines is reduced by half of length if you see like when are these two lines just touching is this when let's say this line is of unit length 3 this line is of unit length 2 right so if they are just touching when they have total length of 5 right uh hello yeah yeah i think was that clear like how i like connected it with the first guys approach right on the single line how you check overlap like yeah. let's just draw a line segment of let's say unit length 2 and 2 when would these overlap when the distance between those two line segment is less than 2 right center if that's that's okay hello on each axis you can do that to find if they overlap but that would be a long approach i would say check no, on the... a... so you need to find overlap in both the axes then only they overlap you, like that's that's the point right but then you get rid of all those cases like whether like it's from the left hand side overlapping or from its overlapping from the top or bottom so you check just on the x axis let's say i i'll give an example with this only na so mm-hmm. let's say if let's say on the x axis let's just consider the length part of it so it's mm-hmm. from 0 to 2 one line segment is from 0 to 2 and Mm-hmm. one line segment is from 1 to 3 right let's two, now three. move yeah so the midpoint of first line segment is 1 and the midpoint of second line segment is 
now if we try to separate these two line segments so let's say i just move the one line segment from 1 to 2 right so the total length would be from 0 to 4 right so are you getting why are we are taking half of the first length of line segment and the half of second line segment so by this we will be able to figure out that they overlap on the length axis like x axis in this case and similarly we can do for the y axis okay. yeah i think that's a clean approach yeah so, okay see. yeah so that sounds um to change and yeah, uh, and simple approach and you won't have floating point errors as well mm -hmm. on this one mm -hmm. Yeah, um, taking the center would be, you know, cleaner. Because normally I just do the, I compare the, the what the, the mean, the minimum of end point and the maximum of. I mean, wait, yeah, the minimum uh, of end point and the maximum of start uh, position, and see if it, uh, if it overlap. But I think this. Uh, using the center would be easier. <clears throat> yeah, that's another approach of doing finding the min uh, minimum on the upper yeah coordinates minimum and the maximum from both the coordinates and then uh, getting an answer. Um, so yeah, seems like we have uh, good approaches. And shall we move on for another question? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll share my screen for the second question. Okay. Everybody can see my screen for the second question. Yeah. Is this a second question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is the second question. I think this is the second question. Yeah, single number two. So, uh, for this particular question, uh, we be providing an array uh, with uh, with element appears three times except for one element, and we need to find the one element which is which appeared as one time. And for example, in this particular example, number one, uh, we know that uh, we see that two appears three times and only three appear one time. So we need to give the answer of three. Similarly, in example two, zero and one are appear, uh, appear three times and 99 appeared one time. So we, uh, the answer is only 99. And uh, the main point of this solving equation is to solve in a linear runtime and without using an extra memory. Anybody have tried this approach? Starting with the simple approach, then we should move on with the, I think, for the complex one. Yeah, I think the most simple approach for this would be to use hash map or to have an uh, array to keep the track of number of times this digit is repeating, every digit is repeating. But yeah. that would cost us some extra memory. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, to eliminate that, I think, uh, you know, if uh, here it is given uh, the uh, num every element ap uh, appears three times exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, but if the, uh, there would have been something like uh, it appears two times, so we could use Boolean algebra and we can XOR all the elements. Yes, so that's a bitwise approach, yeah. Yeah, in the bitwise approach, and in that case, we'll be only left with the element that's appearing once, and the elements that are appearing twice will uh, get uh, uh, zero after uh, exhorting. But for so two elements, it can be easily done. But for the three elements, if you need to find the three elements, I think there yeah. is some other approach. Also, I have yeah. seen the set approach also. Like uh, the set approach was also good if nobody is uh, having anything in their mind. The set approach also works, but not in this case. That's extra memory cost. But the set approach would also great because in earlier, uh, if we have two elements like this, the set approach will be like by adding the element in a set and then removing the element. But yeah. 
for having a three elements we can't like add remove then add that would be that would not be the case in set so yeah but how can we solve in the set approach also that's also a different thing and it's very interesting um, i think uh, here so uh, as i told you about the uh, about the time when we have two element appearing twice i think uh, i have not done it actually but we could uh, use boolean algebra and reduce a function uh, using the operators and we could put it that's what i think we could you know uh, reduce some uh, function uh, through boolean algebra and then we could just implement it on the code that yeah yeah boolean algebra also worked is 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 only the answer of doing that in a runtime uh, linear runtime and without using extra memory this is the only way and uh, if anybody has tried and understand this boolean algebra concept in solving this question and want to explain this particular approach because when i tried it i was a little bit stuck in this particular like uh while solving it uh because here is like if you are doing 2 and 2 that would be a zor which which will give you zero and another 2 will come uh which will be that that particular number but you can't differentiate between if that number appears one time or that number appears three times how would you di distinguish between that uh, okay I could, my, uh, uh, yeah Go ahead. My my thinking uh, was to do the uh, because we have uh, two, but three time right? It it repeat three time. So <coughs> if we run the exclusive or, we run the first time exclusive or to all the element, then what what we let have left over is all the unique uh, the unique number. Right. So, for for example, on example one, and uh, if we run exclusive or on each element, then we get uh, the result. We get would be three x uh, three and two only. We'll get one as the result of. Yeah. But we need only we need to give only one result. Yes. So yeah. now uh, I'm thinking if if we run run it one more time. Uh, uh, you know, no, it it doesn't work. Yeah. Mm. yeah if we we'll run it again, so it will even you know uh, demolish the element that we are trying yeah, to find. Right. Out. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think we could make a truth table for that and solve it using the gates. I am trying it on the notebook right now, actually. Mm. Anybody have answer on this particular question? Uh, what if we, uh, you know, this uh, we are given there are three elements uh, and then there is one element, right? Some of them are inputted three times, and some of them are inputted, uh, you know, there's uh, exactly one, right? So, can we try, you know, converting these numbers into boolean and uh, see how each of the position of bit compares to each other? Can we try any of the combination? No, just first we convert them into binary. Let's try to see the relation between the bits. Ah, uh, that actually what we are even thinking is almost the same. But if we'll be converting into binary, I don't think it's going to help because you know that will even increase our runtime. We'll need no, to I'm check. I'm not talking about elements. converting to binary. I'm just giving you a hint on how you can approach mm -hmm. it. I'm not giving you a solution. I'm just giving you an idea to think about in a different. Way. So, okay, like okay. Uh, we are trying to say that uh, if we can convert these two uh, into um, any binary number, like like this is a binary number into a binary number, and if we're doing an XOR, uh, then the answer would be zero. First case. So two. Two zor two will be zero, and then uh, if no, another two will appear. Let's not talk about zor here. Let's not talk yes. about zor or any operation right now. That's why I'm saying. So let's first just okay. Let me share my screen. Uh, sure. Uh, I'll stop sharing. Okay. So we have these numbers, right? Two, 
two, two and three. Right? Mm -hmm. Let's first of all uh, forget about what operation we have to use. Okay. Let's just compare these into binary. Right? This is two, this is two, this is two, and this is three. Mm -hmm. Now looking at individual bits, can you relate it to the question? So in the question we are given three of the numbers are same and only one is different. Okay, so we can do one thing. We can add the bits and then uh, mod it with three. So we will get that uh, different bit. So how will you add the bits? Can you add the bits? That's the question. Your approach is not wrong. I'm just saying, how will you add the bits? It may be in the right direction. Um, if we take some uh, another bit to add it. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, let's let's make these three numbers something else, which is one one one. Let's which is around six, right? And let's make it. I can make it either. Three. Let's keep it three. Mm -hmm. So what should be the output of uh, this thing? I know I have to get this output, right? Because from the from looking at the problem, I can see that three is the one. But yeah. now looking at this and this structure, how will you relate? It? Can you see for the numbers which are same, they will have the same bit position? Yes, they will. Right. And the one which is different, it may or may not have a different one, right? Because like in the second column, you are not sure because it's same as what we are expecting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we are given that uh, there are numbers which are repeated three times and there's one. So can we make like, there will be always three and plus one bits in the end, in the, in every column or every position. Yeah. And your N is? Number of elements. Or rather, uh, it's a, any X, any number X. So three and plus one will be equal to total number of elements. Like we have a two and three, uh, two is an element which appeared three times. Yes, so n will be three. No, n will be one. N will be one. So I can make a one group of three elements, which is same. Here I can one group, make one group of three elements, which are same. Here I can make one element group, which is of three. Which is three. And if suppose there's another element which is repeating, like five, 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 they will always have this same uh, like repeated character. So I can make another group of same elements, right? So the approach initially, you know, uh, like someone said, I can take number of uh, one suppose here, and then more more than with three and see if they are the you know. So that will always be either zero or one because the formula is of format three and plus one. And if I do three and plus one modulo division three, it will always be three, uh, sorry, one, right? Because mm -hmm. three and will directly uh, divide itself by yeah. three and it will be you know nullified and one will remain, it will give you the mod as one. Right? So essentially what you're doing is just going to each bit index Summing up how many ones are there. 
right? You can either take ones or zeros or whatever you want to take. You just have to count whatever groups you can create. So suppose you can create four ones and three zeros, right? One of the entire sum has to be in the three and plus one format, right? That's what the problem says. So if this is if this is ones and this is zeros, so zero cannot be in the answer because there are only three ways I can. Uh, there's only one group I can create, right? And for one, there's one group I can create and there's still one. Left. So that definitely means this one is coming from the remaining one. So I can put one in the answer. And this way I can go to each bit position and calculate what will be the bit position, bit answer in my answer, bit value in my answer. And that will give you the final result. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. And from the time perspective, you know, you always know that integer has 32 bits. So it's essentially 32 into number of elements, which is almost equal to uh, linear time complexity. Mm -hmm. we need, do you have any idea how, where we can uh, see this kind of uh, working? Because I am a bit confused of doing in a bit manipulation thing. So if you can guide any. Um, uh, do you mean uh, a working program or I, I, I a video or something? I will see. have to check. I'll have okay. to check. I don't know if there's any video, but if I find anything, I'll post it on the stand. Sure. Thank you. Uh, because working in this what complex is one, is, like, this is a bit complex. I can so, share uh, my program. Is... Uh, sorry, okay. I can share my program where I have uh, individual steps and, you know, uh, SOP is printed to get, just get an idea about how each step uh, changes. Okay. That might help, but I'm not sure. Mate. I'll uh, share, uh, I'll try to find something uh, which mm -hmm. you can get, uh, uh, you know, kind of visualization. Yeah, that would be really helpful. Uh, I have a question. So this is about three, like we have a three numbers and you need to find a one. What about if we have a four numbers and then there would be like, and there one element is occurring only one time and uh, one element is- so As long as you and, have, uh, you know, three and plus one, four and plus one kind of formats. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it might follow the same structure. Uh, I think the problem will come if you have like kind of four and plus two structure, like, you know, four are same, two are okay. same. Okay. So that's where you might have a challenge. So like, uh, if like, yeah, so uh, there is one element occurs two times and one is four times. You need to find the element occurring two right. times. Uh, I have not simulated that problem. I'm not uh, gone to the cases, so I cannot 100% comment, but it might be, you know, uh, a bit different than having this odd number of uh, remainder. Yeah, because uh, when I was checking for this particular, uh, problem i was checking the solution so people have turned like uh, taking ones in other side and twos in other side and then they are uh, calculating like uh, what do you mean ones in other side and two like, side? like if the element is element has occurred only one time they are putting that in one particular um, uh, making it that in one particular variable or a group and if they occur two times they put it in a, that particular uh, group and then they are doing some uh, negation probably I'll have to check. I, I yeah, have so. no idea about it, but I got to check. If you could just share some, you know, uh, link where that's the solution I can take a look. Uh, actually, it's in a solution only. Um, like some, I have to check on the discussion side. They are, they have I cannot like access that. the solution. It's, uh, I think it's yeah. locked to the subscriber. Okay. okay. Yeah, uh, I try to, uh, give you that that particular brief so if sure. whenever you want and uh, yeah so anybody have any doubt on this approach and wants to uh, discuss or any have any kind of problem yeah so Not punit anything. i have one question so how mm -hmm. we will get like a bit at particular position like sum of bits at a particular position so essentially that's why you take one bit position, loop over the entire uh, you know, array of integers. 
and okay. use the bit manipulation operators like uh, i hope you know how to create a mask yeah yeah right so you can do a mask create a mask for that position and it with that and you'll get whether that number is uh, you know the bit set is 1 or 0 and just keep a simple counter that uh, you are able to get the number which is greater than 0 which is not equal to 0 if it's if the bit set is 0 the entire number will become 0 if it's not set to 0 you'll get something not right and then you can just have a simple counter for that okay okay so yeah, this uh, if you can send this code on a Slack, that would be really helpful. And yeah. So shall we move on another question? Uh, I have got a, uh, an approach as well. Sure. Uh, the sure. Boolean one. So um, yeah, uh, could you please make a truth table for me uh, on your screen? Um. Puneet, can you do or like? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what yeah. do you want me to create? Uh, yeah, actually, could you please make a truth table for three elements with and one output? You create a truth table for three elements. I thought it was only for two elements. And for example, take the elements as A, B, C and the output yeah. Y. Uh, and, okay, let, let me do it this way. And why? And uh, yeah, I write all the possible combinations for ABC. That's zero 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 one. And similarly, up to until the last one is one one one. It we don't necessarily combination. Yeah. So uh, what we need here uh, at present is if we'll get three same elements then we want our output to be zero so that if we'll be performing any operation on that uh, we get the output as zero so in this case uh, for three, uh, what we need is the uh, top one uh, the same that you have marked zero and the last one these both to be zero and uh, the rest of uh, all must be one okay yeah so <clears throat> i've solved it using k map and the expression that I deduced is I could I'll just share it in the chat. Yeah, so I shared the uh, expression that I deduced uh, using K, uh, K map for this on chat. Uh, yeah, so if you know, uh, we take three elements at first of the array, and then we uh, go on adding each element afterwards and perform this operation to it, I guess it will be uh, helpful for us as we'll get zero in the last. Uh, I mean, like all the elements that will be repeating three times would sum, uh, would uh, uh, would be nullified, and at last we will be left with the one that is, you know, uh, that uh, element is occurring only once. So, uh, how how it is uh, helpful in solving in a real term problems like? This is a truth table of. Do we need to make the truth table for like all the elements like this? I'm not I just able. made this truth table. Uh, yeah, I just made this truth table to find this expression only. Okay. Uh, the one that he has written on the right. Actually, uh, you know, uh, the way we were exhorting uh, that was even reduced from the, some truth table, and uh, we have that as a simplified version for two elements occurring, uh, for so, an element occurring twice. Basically, so, what he's done done is he's made an another ob operation instead of an XOR operation with this expression. So what will happen is it will eliminate all triplets. Like XOR eliminates all, like when XOR eliminates if two bits are same, right? So XOR eliminates those elements. So if we co make this, if this was an operation in a programming language, like what XOR does is, so it will eliminate all the triplets 
in our array so that's why he is made this trip table if i am right is that correct yeah yeah in so similar we, yeah so if we apply yeah. this operation on our array we'll we only left with the element which is like not occurring thrice so that's what we'll be left with yeah and your abc is sort order. of simulate like uh, sorry uh, if you have these numbers 2 2 2 and 3 how will this yeah. how will you implement this uh, logic on the numbers i just want to understand that uh, actually for, uh, at first i'll take the first three elements and okay. i'll apply okay. this log yeah mm -hmm. i'll apply this logic on it okay and then i i'll be like what i'll be doing is like i can, uh, first of all i three i thought uh, i consider it like uh a b c as 2 2 and 2 so for the next time what i'll be doing is i'll be taking 3 i'll be taking a and b as 2 uh, no sorry uh i'm a bit confused here so oh, here you will deduce one result right there will be one bit result that's that's why and then you have only one bit left yeah yeah that's what i thought of right now just okay. um Uh, yeah, Somehow to... you could convert this into a two-bit output. That then probably just might make a bit more sense. Yeah. Uh -huh. But you know the truth table for that will be a bit more complex. Yeah. Because what will happen is these two or these two in future can generate a one more uh, triplet of sorts, right? Because yeah. Now uh, if these two there's one more this and this one, even these two, they can generate one more triplet. Yeah, got it. So converting this into a you know three two table into the output table. of two will be a bit challenging. Yeah. So, but nice approach of thinking you know create this a new operator. Although uh, mm -hmm. it, it might have worked if we could have easily you know, converted this three variable into a two variable. Yeah, I'll definitely do it and share it on Slack. <laughs> Okay. Um, anyone that wants to discuss about this for them, or any other approach? Okay. Seems like we should move on on a um, last question, which is on a hard bucket, and it's a data stream at this point. I'll share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Uh, yeah. For the yeah, for the hard one. So uh, this question is about the data stream as disjoint intervals. Like we are, we'll be providing the data stream of the numbers, and we need to make them as a disjoint interval. So what do you mean by a disjoint? Is like if the number is um, is like having The difference of only one, like then it should come in one question? set. Is this the same question? Yeah, sorry to, uh, sorry to interrupt, but is this the same question? It's the last question. Yeah, data stream has disjoint intervals. Sorry. Any confusion, guys? This is the last one, right? This is the last one only. Uh. Oh, I think someone has the problem about the last question. So yeah, this was a question, and uh, so what's the disjoint intervals are like? If if there is a number who has the difference between, then the difference between the number of another is like um, only one, then it should come in one interval. For example, over here, when we uh, when when they passed one, so we have only one one as a front and the end because there was no other number. And when they occur three, and because less than three is two, and more than three is four, so there is no number in in the in the in our result set. There is a like less than three or two or four is present. So, uh, so it comes in a another set, which is uh, or we can say interval, which is three or three. 
for example if there is an input of 2 like we have the input of 2 then there is a number which is less than uh, 2 which is which was 1 and there is a number which is greater than 2 which was 3 so it combines and form 1 3 as an interval so basically you if you have any number of difference between uh, 1 then it should come in one interval anybody have any doubt about this particular question um any discussion on this particular problem or anyone haven't understood about this about what what we are doing over here okay so uh so yeah any thoughts about how to solve this particular problem so and the other thing is we need to give them in, in a sorted manner <clears throat> guys any have anyone who wants to discuss this approach like their approach about this particular problem anyone have tried okay so uh i'll i'll share my uh, particular <clears throat> answer for this particular problem so what i think we um i have solved with taking a two taking two uh, dictionaries where i where in one dictionary i can use uh, the the starting index and the other is like ending storing the ending values so what i may uh, what my dictionary would do it will be storing that particular value with the interval so uh, i'll share the whiteboard Okay, so uh, for example, I have a uh, one which is like a start map. And what it is doing, its key will be my value, for example, here one, and its interval would be, its value would be the interval. And another is the end map, which is also storing the same like one and this interval uh, so like if any like if there is no if the if my um, start and end map is empty i'll be storing these numbers but if uh, i uh, if they are not empty and my another number occurs is like three I would check in my start map if there is a three value in it. So like not three, three plus one value, which is like um, four. Is there any four in the start map? There is no four in the start map. Or is there any, uh, then, then I'll check four minus, uh, sorry, three minus one in the end map. Is there any two in my end map? There is no two. So I'll just put, I'll just put, three as a key and uh, three and three as an in another interval in that map so here is like yeah so the main part is when 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 two comes then it then i'll check my first set and i'll see if there is any uh, less than in in this particular uh, in this particular uh, map i'll check if 2 plus 3 is present yes 3 is present so now i i uh, i'll i'll take this particular value because i want and this will be my new end so my new end is uh, is 3 and I'll remove this particular uh, uh, value, 
all the uh, my values from my start map so because i i need the end of it my uh, because i am checking value plus 1 value plus 1 means i am checking the upper upper limit of it so whatever the value of this but uh, this interval will give me it will be giving me the upper limit of it similarly if i check from this map i uh, value minus 1 i'll get one from it and i'll remove this one and i'll take the lower limit for that which will be my start so now my new start is 1 so now uh, i got my new uh, and i'll remove this from this map so now my start is this and my end is this my new interval is 1 3 and after this i'll put this new interval in this end now here i'll be storing my uh, my end which is 3 and i'll update this with um Uh, 1.3 and here i'll update my 1 because 1 was already there but i need to update with 1.3 and uh, so if an uh, if next time the same number comes which is like 3 i am taking a set uh, as well which will be uh, which which will be storing all the numbers which have already occurred and if it occurs another next time also it will not pass in this particular problem and when i when there is a method uh, get intervals it will directly give me i call this start map in a sorted way and it will directly give me this 1 3 as an answer anybody who have an understand well, this what if we have what if we have uh, a series of increasing numbers all mm -hmm. the difference of uh, all the difference of 2 right so your the uh, this array will keep going right Because, so if there uh, is a difference one, of 2 then they are not in a disjoint if there is a difference of 2 they are in different disjoint sense right yes because they are not in the same uh, disjoint sense yeah because there should be only difference of one uh, for example over here if next time 5 comes 5 should be in next set not in this interval it should be in next Let, let's take an example like 1 6 3 2 and 4 1 6 3 2 and 5 4 and 5 so this will be our first so our Our interval will is one and one, okay. and next time six comes, our interval will be six comma six. Right. Then three comes next. The next time is three comma three. And where will you insert this three comma three? Sorry, it's it's in the next. Is it the last? It, it will it's be the last the, element of the array, right? Okay. uh so it will be the last but when i am storing in a map so next time uh, i am i'm storing in a web map and uh, sort in and when i'll return i'll be returning in a sorted manner so 1 1 okay. would let's come continue. first and 3 3 would come uh, afterwards sorry right. let's continue on uh, yeah then if then 2 2 comes 2 comes then this would combine this two this two subsets will combine and it will be forming 1 okay comma 3 and how will you how will you identify whether the two is kind of a middle element between these so this 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 particular thing is solving uh, will will help me in getting this because if you check if you see uh, oh. last time i explained this particular uh, method of when i get 1 1 and 3 3 and uh, i separate it out when i get two i um, i did the manipulation in my start and the end map to get 1 3 shall i explain it again okay. so you have to keeping two separate maps one for start points and one for end yes. points right yes yes okay. yeah okay let's and go ahead and uh, then we have two 
I will try to combine now. One, mm. three. Yeah. And then we have four. Mm. Then it will be like, mm. uh, it, it will be forming one, four over here. And if next time is five, then next time is five, we have an upper limit of five, which is six, and the lower limit of five, which is four. So we'll be, and the whole set will be combined and it will be forming one, six as an answer. Okay. Yeah. And so then at this, the end, when you have to return, you will actually uh, take all the hash elements and sort it out, right? Uh, yes. So all the elements, which, and it will be on the basis of their values. So it will be returning. Mm -hmm. You can sort it like a, in a, on a first or in a second, like on this basis or a, yeah, on this basis, it's best. And you can, you should take only one of the map to return it. Like I, 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 I basically use this start map to return it because it's give me uh, the starting values. The thing is, I'm not sure how do you actually iterate over two maps simultaneously? Is there a kind of iterator available? I don't know. Sorry? In Java? Because is there a kind of iterator available where you can uh, iterate over two hash maps simultaneously? Actually, I am not iterating. I am just right? because checking. When, when you are when you're printing it out. Yeah. Then you will need uh, both of the elements, right? Start map and hash end map, right? Both of those mappings you will need. Yeah. So uh, I'll just check if if it uh, the first condition I will check is like if my start and end map is empty. If they are empty, then I'll just put these uh, new values one one to the start and end. So if they are not empty, they contain some value, then I'll check for each map, uh, like what would be the, if, if they're like, how we check the keys, if they, it is present, this uh, one, uh, whatever the value we are getting, which is one, one plus one, mm. which is two, is two present in this start map? If not, then we'll move ahead. Similarly, I'll check um, like one minus one, which is zero it is present in the map or not, it is not present, then I'll just move ahead. And I'll just pass whatever the new, whatever the value I get, I'll just pass it as it is. With the key of this and the interval is this. But if we are having some values, like like if there were present of, presence of a, some, for example, I get two and if there is a, uh, and three is present in both the intervals, both the maps, sorry, so then I'll do the manipulation of this by by getting the end value upper upper limit of the of the of the three and the lower limit from the end map and then take my new start and end and uh, updating um, updating update in both the in both the maps. Yep. Uh, there is another approach like taking a heap. There, there's another approach of heap also. Anybody wants to discuss about that approach if they haven't tried it or something? I don't know about heap, but uh, I've tried it using the primary search tree. Yes. Oh. Who said heap? Sorry. Yeah, yeah I, I think we that. can do with the heap also. Okay. Do you want to discuss that approach? Yes, so I think the approach is uh, simple. Uh, when you have uh, uh, add, you will keep on adding uh, intervals in the heap. For example, if you can write. Uh, shall I clear this one? Or? Mm, yeah, or you can use some uh, space. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take this space. Okay, so I am adding in heap like one, uh, one, one, one. Okay. Uh, let's say then three. Okay. Then seven. Mm -hmm. And then uh, let's say uh, we have uh, <clears throat> two. Okay. And then uh, we'll do, uh, this will be a min heap. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and uh, then uh, do uh, the heap would be on the uh, start one which is like in this case uh, if i have to do a uh, min heapify uh, it will be based on the first uh, one uh, like the start uh, start interval like 1 3 7 2 they are same uh, uh, that's a different case right now and mm-hmm. when uh, we are doing this uh, get interval then mm-hmm. it will become a similar problem uh, if anyone has solved only for like merge intervals so uh, then uh, we'll start merging things which can be uh, overlapping yeah, so between your approach is fine if you have an entire array available with you the problem with the, this question is they have mentioned that it's a stream of data yeah uh, so if new you have a finite can, set yeah new things can keep on coming when we do a get operation uh, that will uh, correct everything which is there in the heap right. so if you have suppose 10 elements like these four elements in the heap right now and you do a heapify operation which will essentially create a sorted uh, you know heap of where you can get uh, the immediately next yes related elements together right so, so in this mm-hmm. Sorry, now there's you have already created this heap Right, mm. which has one one on the top, then two two, then three three, and seven seven. Mm. A four four comes in. Mm. It will also go in. Okay. So let's put four four also. Mm-hmm. So you are not merging anything right now. You are yeah. merging only after when you are actually going to print it. Yes. So when now let's do we do a get interval. Mm-hmm. So first we'll remove one and one because that is the lowest one. So okay, uh, if you can if you can write down uh, can, uh, can you draw a line and then we can. So sorry, I am bad at this. <laughs> Thank you. So first one and one will come out. One and one would be over here. Hmm. Okay. and then uh, after the 2 and 2 will come but uh, 2 and 2 uh, the start of uh, the start is 2 and the previous end was 1 they are like they should be together mm-hmm. we'll merge them as 1 2 like taking a min from this 0th uh, position end. and max from the end position no 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 like how would you for merge like the end of the first interval and the start of the second interval second interval so they and are the like the difference first. of one only so it will be essentially like essentially uh, yeah you don't even need to keep pairs all of the numbers are same you can just keep inserting numbers there and try to find what is the longest uh, continuous sequence yes that if for, one yes part. exactly and then you take 3 3 mm-hmm. uh, i'm just telling for simply uh, simplify uh, so 3 and 3 can be also merged with 1 and 2 So now, uh, when I compare one two with this three, mm-hmm. I'll be getting four, one three. Yeah, you replace it, then you get four okay, four. Okay, guy, happy Valentine Valentine's Day. Bring your GF ten percent off. Bring your wife fifteen percent off. Bring bring both at the same time fifty percent off. <laughs> Sorry, mm-hmm. that is a joke. Okay. Like a Valentine joke. But yeah, good one. Thank you. uh then 4 4 will come and that can be merged with the uh, 1 and 3 that will become 1 4 yep yeah. so it will be like 1 4 and then 7 7 will come uh that could not be merged that will uh, uh, that will be separate then okay. now the heap is uh, we ha- we are done with our elements in the heap we can re- return this result set back and again put these things back in the heap So now, when we are uh, putting that in back in a heap, hmm. then uh, it should follow some order. Which no, order? no matter because heap will uh, uh, heap take care of. Heap has that property of rearranging everything. Oh uh, no! Uh, I'm talking about which, uh, mm-hmm. which result I should add to the heap. This new result? Yes, new, new. Okay. So we will put one four and seven seven. Okay. So now our result. This so so essentially what he is doing is 
the difference between the two approaches that you did earlier and what he's doing is uh, he's tr- he's combining the uh, disjoint sets at the time when is, it is required. Yes. And you are preparing the data beforehand so that whenever the data is required, you can just immediately present it. Right? Yeah, that is, yeah. If you have, right, if you have a system where uh, there are a lot of inserts and you would like to minimize the time for inserts, then probably a second one will work more better. Mm-hmm. But if you have a system where there are a lot of retrievals, mm-hmm. The first one will make more sense because you already have pre-processing. You just have to give it right now. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's the part where it's a, there's a follow-up question. Like mm-hmm. if there are a lot of merges and the number of disjoints intervals are small compared to the stream, and that said, probably you know uh, the first one will make more. Uh, first one or second? Second one will make more sense because your merges will happen only one time. Mm-hmm. And that too, the set will be um, So the complexity wise, I'm just thinking that the first approach is like taking two maps and then sorting afterwards. Um, so sorting is again N log N when you sort. Yeah. yeah. Then if you are inserting, uh, sorting is N log N and you have this activity done N times, so N square log N, right? Uh, which one? Uh, the first, first approach depends. No, yeah, whenever you add something new, you end up sorting again. No, uh, when I'm adding something, I don't end up sorting it, I just end up looking it up in the two maps. I'm yeah. only sorting it when I have to return the data. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In, in, only the returning when you are returning. Okay. Adding the Okay, so on return it will be and log in. Yeah. So if in in second approach we are doing uh, the log the log key operations n times to insert to insert so again n log n. Yeah. Some so some people argue like inserting in heap is not n log n. It's order of n. Oh, log inserting log. in heap is a log n operation, but you are doing it n times, right? So no, uh, essentially the log k operation. So basically what uh, people argue is uh, uh, when you when you're creating a heap, you're not uh, inserting all n elements together. It's a incremental increase. Right. Uh, so what we consider one element, we consider, two, three, four, and it goes till n. Correct. So, and if you sum that operations, one plus two plus three plus four till n, it becomes n into n minus one by two. So I am reading That's one right. article like inserting in heap is not uh, n log n; it's uh, order of n. No, I no. Get, inserting in a inserting in a heap is a log n operation. No, no, no. Uh, what but I meant, creating a heap. Like if you have n numbers and you are creating a heap out of it, it's a uh, order of n operation. I can go back and again I don't read the agree with that because if you logically think in a heap. No, logically I agree with you. Time. It's n log n. There is no uh, if, but if you're going the online and search like creating a heap, what is the complexity? You might get like its order of n. So there is different argument. Sure. Like I have this discussion with someone else also. We have a really long discussion. Like I was arguing an n log n. The other person was arguing order of n, and then it went really long. Yeah, logically it makes n log n, but there are, I can see one article which says it can be. Yeah, there's a white paper which has some partitioning and everything which can implement this as in uh, n time. Yes. So, so but let's for simplicity sake uh, 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 have it like n log n. Yeah, yeah for n log n. That's a normal approach. Yeah. And one approach I, I, I the, think uh, like that was insertion for retrieval again, it will be like you're removing all the elements uh, at order of n and again putting the merge. Retrieval. So, so again, the retriever, uh, it would be n log n in both in insertion and retrieval. Yeah. Yep. So one other thing is like either you can take a tree map also. 
so mm -hmm. which would be adding in a sorting manner but inbuilt tree map would be doing that thing only like sorting in a and log and whatever the complexity but, it has to take hmm. but that could yeah. be costly also because then you are sorting at every step like if technically yeah. we see that so if you go with that tree map implementation that's internally a uh, avl uh, finally balanced right so it's mm -hmm. a login and login way to create that. Mm -hmm. So I okay. think Java tree maps are real trees. Yeah. Okay, then sounds good. And we have passed our time also. So thank you. And anybody have any questions for this after this, like, or wants to discuss anything? I'll stop my recording as well. I'll stop the recording now.